about to see some fearlessness represented through our next speaker. Now, Jared Matthew Weiss, who you may have heard of, is a founder of Overture, a startup that's dedicated to helping the world get to know each other better. Now, his startup, Overture, has produced a lot of their thousands, actually, of their uh, trademark profile videos for individuals, organizations, universities, and notably the mayor of New York and Miss America. Overture is dedicated to helping all these entities tell a compelling and inspiring life story. And he's told his own through his monthly column in Shape Magazine, through Tyra Banks' show and the Today Show at Harvard University, the University of Pennsylvania, Ashoka, and American Express, among many others. Jared Matthew Weiss lives in, was raised in, and is still growing up in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Jared Matthew Weiss. Wow. Hello. Hi. This is so exciting. I am so honored and grateful to be here. First of all, I can't believe he just memorized my life story. That is amazing. Um, and second of all, no, it is a real... It is a real honor to be here today. I am so grateful to be able to do what I do and to be able to stand on this stage and share it with so many incredible people, with so many incredible stories. Because that's really what we're here for, right? We're all here for stories. And storytelling has been a love of mine since, since I was a kid. Storytelling to me is, it's the bedrock of three things. Peace, love, and innovation. And when we're free to tell our stories, when we feel safe enough to tell our stories, that's when peace, love, and innovation really come to fruition. Oh, God, it feels so good to be back on a college campus. <laughs> I remember the day I dropped out of college. <sighs> I sent my mom an email. It said, Dear Mama, I'm dropping out of school and moving to New York City to pursue my dreams. Love the little engine that could. She promptly replied, Dear son, stay in school, get a job, have a plan. Love the little engine that already did. <laughs> but hey, I'm here, I'm on the TED stage, which is cool. You know, I should, do, I should celebrate her real fast. Would you guys mind saying hi to my mom for me? I would love to, uh, I would love to remember this moment forever because I got a TED talk, mama. Um, I just need you all on the count of three. I'm going to video this. I need you all to say, hi, mom. Ready? One, two, three. Hi, mom. Yay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. That was really helpful. Um, so anyway, what was I here to talk about? Right. Storytelling. So I'm going to tell you guys a crazy story. Uh, it happened about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, I, I've always been fascinated with storytelling. I always wanted to help people tell their stories. And I always thought to myself, how am I going to do it? I've experimented with so many things until about a year and a half ago, I had this big idea. And the idea was, if I could help each of you tell your story, if I could help you, you know, uh, articulate who you are, what you do, what inspires you, and you had a way to share that, oh my God, what a world that, that could be. And so I thought to myself, I got to start with my best friend, Jason. So I called him up. It was like 9.30 uh, in the evening. And I said, Jason, I'm going to come to your house tomorrow and I need to make a little video of you in your bedroom. Do you have a black bed sheet? And he said, uh, does my wife need to know about whatever it is you're planning? I said, trust me, it's going to be great, I promise. So I went over the next day and uh, I interviewed Jason on camera for about 45 minutes about his life, about the things that, that mattered most to him. Uh, he was a tutor. I want to know why he was a tutor. What are the things that drives him as a tutor? And so we had this great conversation and we edited it down to a little video that was 60 seconds long and then we shared it on Facebook and all of our friends started liking it. And they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. I wish I could tell my story like this. Um, and so first I want to show you guys Jason's story. So this is, this is the video we did that day. If I were a cartoon character, I would be Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. First of all, because I'm wicked with a bow staff. But the primary reason is that he was the brainy one. And uh, I fancy myself brainy. My biggest inspiration was my high school American history teacher, Thomas Gatch. He had this intense passion, and it really was a matter of storytelling more than it was about, you need to memorize that in the year of 1812, it was more 
can you believe this? And he would climb up onto his desk and like interact these conversations between, you know, King George and, and George Washington yelling at one another across the way. For me, it was like, wow, like this is what a teacher can do. My name is Jason Siegel and I'm a tutor. So, so that was Jason's video. And you know, I shared it with a bunch of people and people loved it and they were like, oh my God, I want one. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, maybe I should do a few more. So I reached out to some people and did their videos and helped them tell their stories and articulate who they were and what inspired them. And then they shared them and then more people wanted them. And then, and then more people wanted them. And next thing you know, now I'm here and I've done about 2,000 of these videos in the last you know, year and a half. Um, and it's been an amazing experience. And I wanted to share with you a couple of things that we've done along the way um, and teach you what I've learned about storytelling um, specifically. A couple of my favorites are definitely this one. I believe that the world is a magical and colorful place. So many cultures, so many amazing people. I'm the first Indian Miss New York. I grew up in Oklahoma and Michigan. Kids would ask me questions like, what does the red dot mean? Will you have an arranged marriage? Do you worship cows? No, I don't worship cows, but I do worship this guy. He's half retriever, half question mark. Love him. I'm a student. I studied brain behavior and cognitive science at the University of Michigan, planning on going to med school. I'm kind of a nerd. I love Star Wars, Star Trek, and anything sci-fi. And I'm on a mission. Miss America has always been the girl next door, but Miss America is evolving and she's not going to look the same anymore. I'm Nina Davalori and I celebrate diversity through cultural competency. Isn't she great? She's unbelievable. She's not done. She's got something else she wants to say. How many beauty queens does it take to change a light bulb? Just one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Nina. Nina actually went on uh, from Miss New York. She actually did, you know, she became Miss America. Um, she's the first Indian Miss America. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable, uh, her story. The, the next video I wanted to show you is of another girl who really, really inspired me. Her story was unbelievable. Her name is Paulina. I want to be a teacher because I like kids. I also want to be a doctor. My favorite food is macaroni and cheese. I like Sleeping Beauty. I live in Puerto Rico. I'm strong. I'm smart. My name is Paulina Anchia. I can do anything. What about this? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it too. I'm looking at you. I can be brave. Cause you got me. My heart breaks. Okay. Amazing, right? Amazing. So, so you know, I, I worked with all these people. I've helped them tell their stories. I've learned so much about them. But I come back to this idea of peace, love, and innovation because of the day Zach walked into my life. Now, Zach came to me because his company was interested in doing videos for all of their employees. And he came in and he was like, okay, you're going to help me tell my story. I'm terrified. And I said, well, why? And he said, because I have a list. And I'm a copywriter for a website, and nobody knows that I have a lisp, right? And now there's going to be a video of me putting myself out there, and everybody's going to know. And so I was, I was shocked. I said, you know, I, uh, I don't know what to do about this. What do I, do? I can't get rid of your lisp. Oh, I got it. I'm going to rewrite your script for you really quickly, and I'm going to eliminate all the S words. And then nobody will know that you lisp. He was so excited. I rewrote the, the script for him. We ended up doing the video. Unfortunately, he works for a company called Splash, so there wasn't much I could do there. But then this was, this was Zach's video. I love helping people capture a good time. I write all of our copy and teach people how to navigate our amazing platform. We're like a family over here. I'm Zach Napolitano, copywriter and account manager at Splash. We'll help you throw an event people can't wait to attend. Hey! He doesn't lisp. That was awesome, right? That was a great video. No lisping. Sweet. That's what I thought. He doesn't lisp. He was happy. He was okay. 
I walked around, I bragged for a couple days. You wouldn't believe what I did. This kid came in, he had a lisp. I got rid of his lisp. I did that. I thought about it. And then it hit me. I really failed Zach, didn't I? I failed Zach because I didn't help Zach tell his story. I helped him hide these little nuances that actually make him who he is. And that's not what, that's not what storytelling is supposed to be all about. Storytelling is supposed to be about, you know, peace and love and innovation, right? Because storytelling is how we connect. It's how we come up with ideas. It's how we collaborate, right? This exercise you all did with connecting and sharing your stories and getting to know each other, that's where relationships come from. That's where big ideas come from. And if we, if we don't make people feel safe in telling their stories, oh my gosh, we put a pause on things like peace, on love and empathy and innovation. And so this is where I have this massive aha moment. And I said, wait, just because I can help people tell a good story, that, that's not everything, right? Because even if you have the ability to tell a great story, you've got a great video, you've great, got a great pitch, if, if you don't feel safe enough to tell that story, well, then you won't tell it. And it's not really about the freedom of speech, is it? Most of the first world, if not all of the first world, has you know, the, the right to freedom of speech. Just because we have the right to share who we are doesn't mean we feel safe enough to. And so immediately I called Zach, and I said, Zach, I need you to come back. And he said, no, I, I can't do this again. Why would I want to do this again? I said, Zach, trust me, this is going to be great. You and I are going to tell your story if you hate it, you never have to share it with anybody. But if you love it, this might be like a pivotal moment for you. The, the one thing is that I'm going to make it all about your lisp. He was like, Jared, okay, fine. I trust you, and if it doesn't come out the way I want it, fine. I said, great. So he came in, and we sat down, and uh, I told him a story about when I was a little kid, and uh, I used to get picked on by a lot of bullies. Then he started opening up to me about his life and things that had happened to him as a child. And we talked for probably two and a half hours. And in the end of it, we came up with a really interesting way to tell his story. And I'm going to share, you, uh, share with you guys now that story. So this is Zach the second time around. It's really cool to know that something I've written has an effect on people, that they celebrate and enjoy it. That feels good. In ninth grade, a bunch of bullies helped me realize that I had a lisp. Thanks, guys. So giving speeches wouldn't be my thing, but writing them, writing anything, that's what I was born to do. I have a passion for words. Some of my favorites, avuncular. It means uncle-like, or Christmas time. It's actually one word in the dictionary. Bet you didn't know that. I've been a ghostwriter for CEOs, celebrities, and athletes, a copywriter for magazines, and I collect and complete crossword puzzles. I admire anyone who can turn a weakness into a strength. And so, to all the students who spoofed my stammer and steadily store my self-esteem with spite and sarcasm, it's cool. You help me discover what I love to do, and I get paid to do it. Winning, I'm Zach Napolitano, and I'm inspired when words work perfectly on a page. I could be so cavalier with my S's. <laughs> it's really funny when uh, Luke is the volunteer from TED who picked me up at the train station yesterday and he asked me, he said, what is, uh, what's your talk on? I said, my talk is actually, I'm just going to tell a story about a kid who lisps. He says, yeah, it's funny. There, there was a kid in my dorm last year who had a lisp. It's really not so bad. <laughs> I also had a kid who stuttered in my dorm. That wasn't so bad either. I said, you know, that's basically my whole talk. Maybe you know, if, if things don't work out, you can do my talk for me. So, you know, what does this story teach us at the end of the day? It teaches us that a culture in which people do not feel safe enough to tell their story cannot progress. We cannot progress. We cannot, we cannot create the peace and the love and the innovation that we strive for if we don't make people feel safe in expressing who they are, what they care about, and what they believe in. And so the only thing I've learned in, in the, the year and a half of helping people tell their stories that is more important than simply just the mechanics of how to tell a great story and how to be entertaining and how to organize your thoughts is to, to make sure that if, if people don't feel safe enough to tell their stories, then, then we've got a really, really big problem. And so whether it's within the context of your family it's within the context of your company, or it's within the context of your country. 
making people feel safe enough to share who they are, what they do, and what they believe is critical. So I encourage all of you, all of you to try to create that safe space within your own cultures and your own communities. And it starts with telling your own story. It starts with telling your own story. Uh, with that said, um, I hope that you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for having me. And um, uh, goodbye. <laughs>